Welcome to today's webinar uh, on the topic of honesty and integrity. So I'm Jack Zenger. Uh, I will be joining uh, with my partner, Joe Folkman, uh, and we have two other colleagues from our organization helping us out in today's uh, webinar. Brianna Corin, our digital marketing manager, will share an offer with you uh, at the end of our session today. And uh, we are fortunate to have with us Tracy Consolini, one of our regional vice presidents, who will be responsible for our chat box. So as you type questions into that uh, chat box, she will be the one responding to you. And she's very knowledgeable. And so we encourage you to type your questions uh, and you will be uh, sure to get some good answers from those. So we want to begin today's session by asking you to respond to this question. In your opinion, what causes ethical lapses in business organizations? And we're going to invite you to select your, your top two. Is it the unfettered pursuit of a target where the only means to achieve it is to cheat? Is it personal greed? Is it hoping to protect the reputation of the institution? Is it being hyper competitive? Is it pleasing a powerful person higher up in the organization? So if you would please kind of weigh in with your uh, thoughts about what are the two most frequent causes for this to happen? And we appreciate you who kind of weigh in very quickly. And we'll wait just a moment and see what kind of responses we get. Joe, what's your guess? What's uh, uh, you know, personal greed? <laughs> <laughs> personal greed. Right, that's uh, got to be the winner. Uh, I see. <laughs> well, let's people. see here if you're if you're correct. Oh, I and I sure enough, it's hyper competitiveness. Wanting to win at any cost gets more than half the votes. And then secondly, it's pleasing a powerful person higher up in the organization. And we, we will probably be talking about some examples of those two things, um, particularly that, that last one about pleasing a person who's high up in the organization, who's set what may be a, an unreasonable kind of goal. Anyway, Joe, share the good news about uh, honesty and integrity. Well, it really is some good news, Jack. And when we look at our data, and this is from about 140,000 leaders, uh, what you see here, average rating for honesty and integrity is on a five-point scale, 4.06, <laughs> which is, wow, that's the average. And so it is, in our 19 competencies, the highest rated competency of all 19 which is kind of interesting uh, that it gets such a high rating. Now, you notice that the, the bottom rating is inspires and motivates others. And that average score is 3.73. But, but that is really a high rating. Uh, and, and if you look at the importance ranking on it, it ranks number six in terms of importance. So clearly among the top things. And for direct reports, it's number three. So if you read the data, right, you sort of say, hey, it looks like we're pretty good at honesty and integrity, and it's, it's very important. Um, maybe there's no problem here. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's no problem. Maybe and, uh, there's no problem. What do you think, Jack? Well, <clears throat> we're going to invite you to think with us about if this condition exists, how does it present itself? And we think that one very common way is for employees or their exe you know, executives in the organization to either shade the truth, act a bit dishonestly, and they are encouraging this unacceptable business practices. So that, that's one of the ways it gets presented in organizations. It's okay to keep the books open for a few extra days to meet our sales number for the month. Uh, a second way it presents itself, we think, is employees or executives acting not with consistency. 
they're saying one thing and doing another, or they're saying one thing this week and a different different thing the next week. So it's this inconsistency that seems to come up uh, very frequently. And you know, so Jack, when, when, yeah. whenever I've gotten uh, a manager where they've gotten some lower scores on honesty and integrity, they, it just really, it's so terrible for them. And they go, I've never told a lie. <laughs> and, and again, and the question is, all right, but have you been consistent, <laughs> right? <laughs> So we're going to ask you one other question. Um, in, in your opinion, which of these happens most often in organizations? Is it that employees or executives act dishonestly or encourage uh, unacceptable business practices? Or do you see employees or executives acting with inconsistency, kind of saying one thing and doing another? What's been your experience? Which of these happens most frequently? Well, I, I might have biased this a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll see what they say. Let's see what people say. Oh. Well, wow. <laughs> so, you know, in a way, that's encouraging, isn't it? That that uh, not very many of our people on this uh, webinar call today. Uh, see their employees or their executives acting in an overtly dishonest uh, way or encouraging others to do it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the biggest, you know, most frequently occurring event is people acting inconsistently. Well, we just have one piece of advice, I guess. If, if you, it is interesting to see a list of the very well-known, very well-respected business organizations where there have been uh, one or two or a few executives who have acted dishonestly and who have encouraged or tolerated unacceptable business practices. And for that group of people, we would have just some very kind of straightforward advice. And that advice would be, do your best to stop it. Uh, because you know that sooner or later, it will come to light. And any of the hopefully positive gains that people were thinking might have been achieved will inevitably be lost. But let's move on. The most common problem is this one that we've labeled as kind of leaders acting inconsistently. Maybe it's saying one thing and doing another, or it's not doing the same thing kind of uh, regularly and, and uh, from one period of time to, to the next. Uh, it's promising more than they can deliver. It's saying to other people what you think that they want to hear. Uh, it's, it's seeking to be nice rather than giving candid, honest messages to your colleagues. And so it's that inconsistency that we're going to be focusing on in the main. And so, Joe, tell us how big the problem is. Well, if we look at the data and we're looking over 146,000 leaders, managers who were rated by over 1 million raters. And if you look at the percentage of people who got a, a need significant improvement or need some improvement on uh, you know, the question of, of saying one thing and doing another, uh, the rate is about 4.8%. Now, well, you look at that and you say, wow, that is really low. In fact, but, but you know, crime rates aren't high. I mean, the rate of crime in the U.S. is about 2.4%. You know, as a, as a population, only 2.4% of the population commit crimes. And, and so as you think about that, 4.8%, that's, that's about double that, uh, the crime rate. Uh, but it's very low. And again, it was our most positive item. So, you know, if, if you think about this, if you have 20, 20 uh, uh, raters, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a pretty low score. Now, the problem isn't so much with people being dishonest and, and trying to, to scam things and, 
and that, that, that's not the major problem with honesty and integrity. The, the major problem uh, is that leaders are not, they're not perceived as being unethical or dishonest, but there's a moderate, there, there's moderate ratings on honesty. Is that a problem? And, and so what I'm going to show you is kind of a complicated chart, but I'm going to show you two metrics here. I'm going to show you overall leadership effectiveness, which is the blue bar. And I'm going to show you the average rating on honesty and integrity. And if you get an average rating of 3.21, which on our scale, it, you know, goes from significant strength to needs significant improvement, uh, that's a rating of competent. In other words, if you're getting a rating of competent on honesty and integrity, it has a profoundly negative effect because your overall leadership effectiveness is at the ninth percentile. Now, if you go to the next level, uh, if you're at the next level, you get a rating of 3.75, which is kind of close to strength. Uh, again, average overall effectiveness 27th percentile. You've got to get 4.11 to be average at the 51st percentile on overall leadership effectiveness. And in fact, if you get that highest rating, uh, you know, 4.72, you're in the top 10%. Overall leadership effectiveness is at the 91st percentile. So you see this correlation between honesty and integrity and overall leadership effectiveness. And basically this is saying there is a margin. You, you, I mean, you cannot sort of be sort of having a moderate score on that is a losing proposition, right? <laughs> you, you, you are going to be viewed in a negative light by having just a moderate score. And to get a high score, let me give you the example here on the bottom of the screen, a 4.72, top 10%, if you had 13 raters, which is the average number of raters that we have in our database, you need 10 raters to rate you five uh, significant strength and three could rate you four, which would give you a three, three point, uh, 4.72. So, you know, that, that just gives you the sense of what it would require to get that kind of a rating on the scale. So, uh, Jack, there's, there's not a lot of margin for <laughs> slippage here, is there? There really isn't. And what it says is that... Uh... The, the, the people who report to leaders really expect them to have a high level of honesty and integrity. And having just a moderate level is not, is not acceptable. So that, that's a good, it's a good message to us all. Yeah, yeah, you can't, a little bit is a lot here, right? Moderate is terrible uh, in, in terms of that. And, and if you look at people at the 10th percentile, these are the average scores on the three items that we measure honesty and integrity. And notice that the lowest score on this is, is a role model and sets a good example for the work group. Now, I, I mean, many people would argue that they, they weren't dishonest, but they didn't like a particular policy. So they didn't advocate for it or they weren't enthusiastic about it, right? Which you know, they're not a role model. So when people saw that question, they said, you know, you, you, you get a three or a two. Uh, works hard to walk the talk, avoid saying one thing and doing another. We're gonna talk about inconsistency here. And, and while honesty and integrity is very, you know, dishonesty and low integrity is very rare, inconsistency is very common. And that's why everyone, I think, should listen to this podcast and should think about this particular competency because we're all inconsistent. We all make promises we don't follow through on. We all kind of say, yeah, I'll do that. We don't. And, and so this last item is careful to honor commitments and keep promises. That's, that is the place I think we get into trouble here. And that's the concern I have. If you look at people who are in the bottom 10% on honesty and integrity, and you look at every other competency, you can see how low they are. But look at the lowest ones. And number one, takes initiative. 
we are seeing this strong correlation between being rated high on honesty and integrity and taking initiative and driving for results, doing something with it. But you see the second one, making decisions, right? And it's like, yeah, well, you say you're honest, but you made a decision. <laughs> and the third thing is relationships. And we're going to see that again over and over in this. It, it, it's easier to, to if, we, if we like someone, we, we want to believe that they're honest and they're consistent. So, so relationships have a lot to do with this and really have a strong influence on it. If you look at the effectiveness of males versus females, uh, I'm sorry, guys, but, but females are rated significantly higher on this, this quality. Uh, and you have to look at yourself and ask why. If you look at this over age, what you see is the effect from years of experience. <laughs> years of saying, I'll do that when you don't do it. Years of being inconsistent. And over time, people remember that. But if you look at this and we divide it up and we look at age and then we look at males versus females, you see that males are more inconsistent. And uh, that's, that's an interesting, and I, I just wanna raise that issue for myself and say, <laughs> you know, I, I probably need to be more consistent. I probably ought to learn hard, work harder to honor my commitments and, and not make commitments, uh, you know, foolheartedly. Jack, any other advice on that? No, I just was very, very pleased to see that on that previous slide, Joe, the one just before, that that uh, that actually, as people got older, you know, sixty-one and above, that they, they began to go up. That, you know, they, <laughs> that, so maybe even for those of us who are in their, you know, nineties, that 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 number is going to be clearly higher. I, I'm That's sure the, it's back up to fifty-two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true, Jack. Well, <laughs> hopefully you were able to take the self-assessment and we didn't give you an honesty test, but we did, you a, did give you a consistency test. We found when we looked at the measure that there was a high correlation between consistency and confidence. And so what the scale tends to measure is your confidence, your, your, and, and this is initiative and this is it, and, and we're going to talk about assertiveness uh, as, as a real key ingredient to, to honesty here, but it tends to measure both of those things, the consistency and the confidence. And were you more consistent and confident or less consistent and confident? Uh, I, I, I think it's interesting here. If you look at our data, you got your score on this. It's minus, uh, you can see there's a, there's a scores range. Uh, in, in terms of, of the, the scores that you got. And so a low score would be a minus 11 to minus three, a middle mid range is minus two to plus two. And then a, a, a more consistent score would be three to 11. And, and you can see your score one, uh, you know, the average uh, for the norms where we have about, uh, you know, data from, you know, a couple of thousand people is 0.88. So it, it's just right around zero, close to zero, close to one, closer to one. The, the score for this group, the average for this group was higher. It was 1.33. So that's the average score for this group of, of uh, when you guys turned in your data. What I'd like to show you is this, and, and this is how we created this assessment. We have 360 data on about 200 leaders. And we looked at the honesty and integrity scores. And then we looked at the items that were highly correlated with the honesty and integrity scores. And that's how we created that, this self-assessment, plus 11 to minus 11. And if you look at these minus uh, 11 to minus three, and we looked at the 360 ratings from others, okay, not yourself, but others, they're at the 45th percentile. If you look at the mixed minus two to plus two, they're at 62.62nd percentile. And if you look at the high consistency, high confidence, three to 11, you can see that they're at the 71st percentile on, on honesty and integrity. That's our validation. So we think there's a really reasonably good correlation here. It's not perfect. I always say that if you've got a 
low score and you say, oh, that can't be. I, well, okay, get a 360. That's why you can really get an accurate score on it. But, but we do believe it, it, it is directionally accurate. <laughs> That's a psychometrician's way to say, I think it's pretty good. Um, so what, what was your score? Uh, where did you come in? Were you, uh, was it a low score, minus 10 to minus three? Was it a moderate score? Or was it a, 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 a high score, you know, more consistent, more confident? Where did you score on your self-assessment and how did you do? I looked at the individual scores and there were some, there were some low ones, there were some high ones. And again, this is measuring two things. It's both confidence and consistency. Uh, and and they're both in there. So Terry, what what did we come out with that? It looks uh, what does that look like? Okay, well about fifty four percent were were high. Uh, you know about uh, forty percent were medium, and only about six percent low. Okay, all right. Well, let's continue on, Jack. Uh, this is a if you look at the impact of honesty and integrity. And if you think about having a boss who's, and again, I, we say honesty and integrity, less consistent, less likely to honor their agreements, willing to say one thing, do another. If they're low on that scale, you, you, you know, the engagement is significantly lower. If they're high on that scale, the engagement is significantly higher. And again, engagement is the is the, is is the satisfaction and willingness to do more at work, and and that's a good measure of that. So we find a very strong correlation with engagement. We also find a very strong correlation with discretionary effort, the willingness of people to go the extra mile to do more. Linked to this is something we've seen in the news lately, something called quietly quitting. We actually found that that that's the opposite end of discretionary effort. And we find that if you're in the first to the ninth percentile on, on uh, honesty and integrity, uh, the percentage of people that are quietly quitting, in other words, they're not willing to do more, they're not willing to put in more effort, which is the definition of quietly quitting. There's about 15% of your employees that are quietly quitting. So there's, there's a connection there. And finally, um, the, the percentage of your direct reports to think about quitting if you work for a boss who's inconsistent, who says one thing and does another, who tends to tell fibs, 48% of those people are saying they're thinking about quitting versus only 14% if, if you're in the top 10%. Okay, so it's very clear from what Joe has presented that not only do employees like, but they kind of thrive when they work for leaders who are more consistent, who are good role models, and who act with much greater uh, integrity in, in, in what they do. So we want to now move to talking about how do we, how do we improve this? What, what can we possibly do that would elevate this consistency and how we are perceived in terms of, of our integrity and honesty. Obviously, we can improve it by saying to people what they probably need to hear rather than just what they would like to hear. Um, we can be careful about not assuming and, and having low expectations of other people. Uh, there was a classic study done on, on school children uh, when the, the teachers had been told that certain of the students were not very bright, did not have a good, good discipline, and, and the expectations about those students was set very low. What they observed was, as the year played out, the teachers treated those students very differently then they treated the students that they thought had high scores or had, had good behavior. Uh, there is a, a Pygmalion effect that you, you read into people what you think is going to be there and your belief about them changes their behavior. 
Yeah, Jack, they call them light bloomers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which right. I kind of like, yeah. And, and if, if people have concern only for the outcomes and don't care about the methods that are used, so you know, I don't know about you, but I watch a number of documentaries uh, on NPR from time to time, and it's really fascinating to see them uh, talk about some of these classic cases of where whistleblowers have had the courage to step up and confront people in power with behavior that is not honest where products are not meeting the expectations that they that they were supposed to have. And we all, we've all heard and know the stories. Uh, there's uh, a company recently that's become quite uh, popular in the press, Theranos, that uh, was established by a, a woman who claimed that she had this wonderful new way of testing blood that with one drop of blood, she could, con she could conduct very powerful and very accurate tests. But it turns out that they weren't accurate and they weren't producing uh, solid results. And a couple of the employees, younger people, uh, a fellow named Tyler Schultz and Erica Chung, uh, had the courage to go to some people who were making a documentary about the company, uh, who went to the, the people who were in power uh, in the case of Tyler Schultz, he went to his uh, grandfather, who had been one of the, the, the financial supporters of the company, to kind of point out these failings. We read the accounts of, of uh, engineers in, a, in an aircraft company kind of saying, hey, wait a minute, these, these tests are, are, are not showing that this aircraft is as, is as safe as we are claiming it to be. Uh, we see, you know, we've seen such notable examples of where a few people in an organization can cause enormous harm. Uh, and so we would just kind of say one of the things that we know that really does help is when people develop the courage to speak up and to speak truth to power and tell the truth about what a product really is doing. And if it has failings, to be willing to point that out in, in very uncertain kind of terms. And Joe, I think there's a little graph there that's, that shows the impact of taking initiative on the, on the horizontal axis plot, plotted against scores of honesty and integrity. And you see that there is a strong correlation between those who are perceived as having high honesty, high integrity, and their willingness to take the initiative to speak up and tell truth to power. Uh, others' perceptions, you know, how do people improve the way they're perceived? Is it primarily driven by a, what you're currently doing, B, what you've done in the past, C, your, your number three, your public statements about the importance of integrity, or do you think it's a combination of, of one and two, what you're currently doing and what you've done, done historically? So we would really invite you to kind of give us your, your view. Uh, how, what influences the way you are perceived most powerfully, which of those four options? And I will weigh in here a little bit as you are completing your scores in saying that I'm always very uneasy when someone tells me I'm the most honest person you will ever meet. <laughs> My advice to you is to hold on to your wallet or your purse uh, because the person who is always proclaiming their honesty and integrity uh, isn't, in my experience, the person who is most honest and have, has highest uh, integrity. So let's see, the results were, yep, it's a combination of one and two. <laughs> what you're currently doing, what you've done in the past, that's what creates 
the way we are perceived on this on this dimension. Jack, you might have biased this, but nobody voted for the I noticed that nobody <laughs> voted for that. So well, yeah, how you said go that about later it? on? They had a so, chance. <laughs> yeah. So the, the next slide talks about you know what might we what might how might we, we think we might want to go about this and. One possibility, of course, is that you would sort of proclaim your honesty. Number two would be that you 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 always give very brutally honest messages to your colleagues. So you don't give a lot of praise and commendation. You, you you minimize that, and indeed you're the one that kind of calls out others for their kind of shading of the truth. And those are all possibilities, but we are going to say to you that that uh, those aren't the most powerful ways that you can go about um, changing the way you're perceived on this dimension of honesty and integrity. I indeed, what we have done is to look at our database that has a million 360 degree feedback instruments from different respondents pertaining to about 110,000 leaders. And we looked at what are those other behaviors that people engage in that are highly correlated with being perceived as having extremely high honesty and integrity. And the results were that there were five indeed, we've called them strength builders that really are powerfully correlated to being perceived with high integrity and honesty. And the first one is driving for results, but it isn't, it isn't just the sheer driving for results by itself. It's doing it in the right way. It's delivering on commitments consistently, regularly. It's keeping other people informed about the results that you're producing. And particularly it's when you make a mistake or there's a delay and a, a a deadline is not going to be met, that you let people know about that and that you do everything possible to minimize the negative consequences of a mistake or a failure on, on your part. So delivering results is about you know, consistency and keeping people informed about that consistency. And that's no? always hard to do, Jack, when, when, yeah. when you make a mistake is to kind of, hey, I blew it. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah, not yeah. going to hit that. That's a tough thing to do. The second one is building trust. And as you think about, uh, you know, the key, one of the keys to kind of, you know, being rated high on honesty and integrity is do people trust you? Uh, I've done a little bit of research on trust. I spent about two years figuring it out. And, and again, to build your trust, there's three things that help. One is positive relationships, you know, we, and we're going to see that again with, with uh, honesty and integrity. If we like somebody, we're more likely to believe they're honest. If we dislike somebody, we, we can kind of, it's easier to sort of think they're not, they're not honest, but on trust, you need all three of these things. So building relationships, which is the most powerful thing. Second is expertise. You need to know your job. You were given a job and you, were, you need to be an expert. You need to know everything about that job. And if you don't know it, if, if, if technologies move forward, you need to learn it because not knowing it sort of makes you kind of in that category of inconsistent. And the third thing is, of course, consistency. I say what I do, I do what I say. And I think our biggest problem in life is we say we're going to do things and we don't do it. We don't really monitor when we say I'll do that. And, and so that's the, the third thing. What's next, Jack? And the strength builder that's th number three is again, this uh, being assertive. And we know that we've kind of talked about this earlier, but um, when we first saw this in the data, uh, both Joe and I were a little bit puzzled, you know, because you don't think about honesty and integrity being highly correlated with being assertive. But when you think about where, where honesty and integrity really is put to the test, it's when something is being done that's a little bit questionable and it's, it's being willing to put 
your reputation and your job on the line, if need be, to speak up and tell those in power that something's not right. And this goes back many years to the Enron example with a woman who was the one of the accountants who kind of spoke up to her her boss and said, what we're doing is wrong and it's going to bring this company down if we don't stop it. And uh, that that's that's being assertive. And so the ultimate test, in a way, of integrity and honesty is the degree to which when when the occasion demands it, are we willing to kind of step forward and call attention to a bad policy? Uh, we're aware of a company that had a policy that rewarded people for opening new accounts. And what that, what that led to was people opening up new accounts for people, the customers who didn't know it. And so a, a well-intentioned policy caused very bad behavior on the part of people when they put it into practice. People had to be willing to speak up and say, this is not right. You know, and I love the symbol on this one, Jack, the hand raise, right? <laughs> right. The hand raise. So, hey, hey, something's wrong here. And that's Stop. just a beautiful symbol for that, that, that assertiveness. Uh, the, the next one is building relationships. And, and I've talked a little bit about this, but one of the things that happens is our relationships. And, and this kind of bothers me a little bit because you think about these crooks that rip off uh, older uh, people and they, they go to their homes and they, you know, they're older and they, they get to be friends and they pay a lot of attention to them. And then they say, give me your life savings. <laughs> and then they steal it. And, and if you think about, it's the power of relationships. Now, you can build relationships and be an evil, terrible person that, you know, but, but it just, it, it's significant if, if, you, if you have an issue with somebody, if somebody's not valuing your consistency, one way to help is to build relationships, is to get a closer relationship with their repair fractured relationships and don't allow long-term tight relationships to obscure or condone bad behavior. In other words, you know, when you have a good relationship with someone and they're doing the wrong things, call them out on that. So relationship building is a very powerful tool in, in building your integrity and honesty. And the fifth strength builder that our research identified was one that uh, is really becoming, you know, more and more kind of obvious to me, and that is this willingness of people to ask for and act on feedback. Uh, when someone has the, the courage to ask for feedback, it conveys their humility and their openness to change. And it, it conveys that they want to know about their behavior uh, and where it may fall short. And if indeed one of the important uh, opportunities for overall leadership development is obtaining greater self-awareness, the best kind of self-awareness isn't the kind that comes from introspection and psychotherapy. It, it's the kind of self-awareness that comes from having people tell you what you're doing that's really helpful and to tell you what you're doing that really gets in the way and detracts from your performance. And then the, the willingness to then take that feedback and act on it, that conveys a serious conviction on your part about continual improvement. Yeah, it's like free cycle therapy, Jack. It's a pretty good deal. Just ask for feedback. Well, right. in that self-assessment, we took all five of those strength builders and we wanted you to rate your effectiveness on them. Now, I hope that one of the things you've got out of this presentation today and this whole issue of honesty and integrity and consistency is we could all improve on this. Because while, while I know, you know you're not all a bunch of liars out there, I'll bet you're not totally consistent. So these are gonna help. And what we're, we're gonna suggest is you look at this in terms of, is there a low score on one of these that you say, gee, I'm not as good as I could be on this? 
and, and look at the scores and think about where you're at. We also show you on this the norms, and we also have you rate your effectiveness on honesty and integrity. And so you can see how you score yourself on honesty and integrity, and you can see where that score compares to the norm. So you can get an idea about which one of those you could work on. And I'd like to encourage everyone here to sort of find one thing they could do to work on to be a little more consistent. And we know this works. And so let me show you why. <laughs> so as we looked at the data, here's what we found. We looked at your effectiveness on honesty and integrity. And if you had a fatal flaw in any one of the five uh, uh, strength builders, your average effectiveness score on honesty and integrity was at the 27th percentile. Now, if you were above average on one of these, it went up to the 33rd percentile, above average on two, 45th percentile, above average on three, goes to the 57th percentile. So by just improving a little bit, by being above average, it improves your score on honesty and integrity if you if you take that sort of linear approach and say well i need to be good at all five of these we have a better approach it's our strength building approach look what happens if you're just at the 90th percentile on any one of these you're at the 73rd percentile on honesty and integrity 90th percentile on two 84 3 98 89th and four 94th. Our advice is if you don't have a fatal flaw on any one of these, these five, we would strongly encourage you to build a strength, stand out, be really good at one of these. That, that boosts you to the 73rd percentile, just being really good at one. And so our hope for you is that you'll be excited about sort of improving one of these and being more consistent. So if you uh, can select one, you can begin by saying, do I have a fatal flaw in any one of those strength building behaviors? Uh, would improving that behavior have a significant positive impact on my performance in my current job? Am I reasonably passionate about improving that behavior? Th that's the, those are some questions you might ask yourself that would help you make the choice of which of the five would be the best place for you to start. If there's a fatal flaw, work on that. If not, then which one would have the most positive impact on your current job? So we would, we would appreciate just knowing kind of which one you chose. Uh, so of this script that's on our webinar today, uh, which one seemed to be most relevant for you. Jack, which one of these five is the easiest? I think number five. I agree. <laughs> Just asking for feedback. I, mean, I think asking for feedback and, 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 and acting on it is really uh, the easiest one. That's the low hanging fruit. <laughs> that is the low hanging fruit. Which one's the most powerful? Uh, being assertive. I agree. <laughs> I, I still remember when we found that in our original research. We yeah. go, oh, what oh, is that? And then wow. we, we saw the connection. All right. So what's the answer, Tracy? Uh, <laughs> ask for and okay. People went well, we, we're delighted that you chose that one. It's one that you can get good at uh, and it is sure to have real benefits to you. So if you will um download if you will kind of fill out the the feedback form at the end the, our exit survey you will then receive uh, a little honesty and integrity strength builder development guide that gives you some practical suggestions about how you can improve your honesty and your integrity in a variety of ways so again you will receive that when you complete the exit survey. And our final kind of a word of, of, of wisdom from one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, uh, said, honesty is the first chapter 
in the Book of Wisdom. And with that, let me now turn the time over to Brianne or Corin, who's going to give you a very attractive offer, we think. So, Bri? Yes, thank you, Jack and Joe, for describing these different strength builders about honesty and integrity. You know, as you were going throughout this, I was thinking about uh, kind of my background in marketing and analytics. And I can tell you that there are leadership skills that are very buzzworthy, that get people's attention, that are enviable. And people talk about strategy and they talk about charisma, inspiring leadership. And you know what is not buzzworthy that people don't talk about or celebrate is honesty and integrity. And yet it is the core of extraordinary leadership. It's something we ex we expect from people, but we may not applaud them enough for it. So like Joe discussed today and Jack, that this doesn't come down to outright lying or cheating, but it comes down to your consistency in your work and your actions. And if honesty and integrity are not at the forefront of the way we lead and the culture and the organizations that we want to create, then all those other enviable leadership skills won't really matter. They'll dry up. So we want you to value this skill more. And we want to help you by doing this um, through hosting this webinar of honesty and integrity in your organization or one of our other micro learning um, skills series. Um, you can go onto our website and see all of our different sessions that we have to offer. So the exclusive discount is $5,000 for this for up to 25 participants. The standard fee is around 7,500. And again, you can choose any two sessions from our catalog at 4,500 for each for up to 25 participants. Now, this must be scheduled by October 30th. 2022 to get this offer. If you are interested, you can find the information in the exit survey that we will give out once this webinar concludes. So with that, as always, we love your feedback. We want to hear it from you. So please let us know what you thought, any suggestions that you have for us in this exit survey. If you go to the comments below, you will see that link right there that you can click. Or once you're done, you'll also have something auto-populate. Thank you for coming. We hope that you join us next month for our webinar. Um, as always, thank you.